Welcome to another installment of our MV Quick Theme video series. This episode is focused on project setup. So this is helping you get your environment set up and ready to go for a new project. I'm going to be skipping all of the prerequisite steps, but I'm going to go through the entire flow of one way that you can set up your environment for a new custom theme project. First of all, we're going to go to nvquicktheme.com. This is the demo theme for NV Quick Theme, and it's the theme that you get with the project run and built and packaged up right out of the box. We're going to use that as a starting point. So we're going to go to the download NV Quick Theme button, which will take us to the GitHub repository. Again, I'm not going to go into a lot of details about GitHub and some of these particular things to get your environment set up uh, and configured to be able to use ME Quick Theme. If you do need help with that, check out the first video in this series called Intro. So first of all, we're going to go to the documentation. I'm going to click this link in the description of the repository. And we're going to be focused on the project setup section. Um, also getting to the point where we can actually do the things that are on project setup. It's quite simple what we're going to do when we get to this step. But first, let's get an instance of DNN installed on our local machine. I'm going to use NV QuickSight to do that. You can get that at nvquicksite.com. But I'm going to start that up. And we're going to install an instance of DNN 9.2.2 .2 on our local machine. I'm going to click Next. It is already downloaded, so I do not want to download it again. We're going to call this one nvq02 because this is the second video in our video series dot loc and I'm going to navigate to a different directory that I'm going to use for this under dev dnn themes nv quick theme videos 02 project setup You'll, of course, have your own directory structure here. It can really go anywhere on your local machine. I'm going to select that folder. And we're going to click Next. Now, it wants to create the folder for NVQ02. So we're going to let it do that. And I am going to use my local instance of the database here. I'm going to click Next. Now it's installing DNN locally. This won't take too long, but while this is installing, there's really two different ways that you can work with MB Quick Theme locally. One is to develop right inside of a DNN instance. That's what we're going to do today. You also can just do this in a folder of your own. Doesn't have to be inside DNN. The big difference there is that you're going to have to package up that custom theme and install it into a DNN instance to test it out. One of the good things about doing it this way is that you can modify theme files directly and they are instantly available inside of DNN without having to go through the install process. That of course is good in the development, but it is um, not a great way to test out your package once you get it ready to use. So do always recommend if you are going to develop it locally inside of a DNN instance that you do take the time to test out the install package as well and make sure that it operates as you expect. So I'm going to set this up with a password from my local instance. Now what we're doing here is really just installing DNN. This has nothing really to do with ME Quick Theme. We're just getting it set up to develop ME Quick Theme 
locally. I'll leave it as the default template and we will click continue and it's going to finish the installation of DNN locally on this machine. So once we get this set up and ready to go, we're ready at that point to clone the repository from GitHub or download it as a zip file and place it inside portals, zero, skins, and a folder for your custom theme. So we'll walk through that in just a minute. We're going to be doing a clone of the repository. So I'm going to go ahead and start up my git bash terminal. So I'm going to open git bash. And you may remember from the other video, this is really kind of like a command prompt, but it is specific, uh, specifically geared to run git commands um, in your command line interface. So I'm going to go ahead and start navigating to the proper directory. I'm going to cd to c colon backslash and oops c colon and then I think I've got a dev folder set up so I'm going to change directory into dev and I think I've got a DNN we'll go to DNN we'll list those out I think I've got a themes folder so I'm going to navigate into there Going to navigate into the MV Quick Themes videos folder, and we're going to go to the 02 folder. And let me make this a bit wider because our command prompt is going to take the full path in there. So now I'm in the folder that we've got for this uh, this particular video. We've got an MVQ02. We'll go into that folder. We're going to go into the website folder. Now, the three folders that we're looking at here is database, logs, and website. Those are folders that were created by MV QuickSight when it was setting up the, the website. So we're going to go into the website folder. Now here, and let me just use a different command here. I'm going to list all. We're going to go into the portals directory at this point. Okay, and we're going to go into the zero um, directory here because that is the default portal that is set up when you install DNN. All right, so here we are ready to, I'm sorry, I messed up. We're going to go up one level. We're going to go into the underscore default. We want to develop themes in the host folder for portals, and that is underscore default, um, not portal zero. Uh, my apologies for that. We'll make this a bit wider as well. Now that our path has gotten a bit longer. Okay, so now we should have our skins folder. So we can change directory into skins. And at this point, this is where we're going to set up a new folder. We're actually going to clone the NV Quick Theme project from GitHub into this folder right here. So let's switch back over and let's just make sure our DNN instance is running OK. We're going to click View Website and finish the installation here. And it should come up and have us already logged in. Of course, it will take just a second to do that. Okay, so while that's coming up, I'm going to go ahead and clone the GitHub repository. So I'm going to switch tabs while that, that tab is loading up. Over here on the repository, I'm going to open this in a new window. You will see this clone or download button. We're going to click this and we're going to copy this path into our clipboard okay we're gonna use the command line interface to actually clone okay good we've got DNN up and running so let's navigate back over to our get bash window 
And we'll make this a bit bigger so we can see things. And I'm not sure why that is behaving that way. Getting a little finicky on my computer. By the way, I'm also on a Mac here, so just ignore the very top toolbar. I'm really running in Windows on Mac inside of Parallels, um, so don't let that throw you off. Everything that I'm doing here is inside of a Windows environment for the sake of discussion here. Okay, so at this point, remember, we are inside the DNN instance under Portals, underscore default, skins and I'm gonna list all we've got the default scan that's installed as well as Exilion this installed so at this point we're gonna clone remember we copied that link that get link into our clipboard so I'm gonna run the command git clone space and I'm gonna paste in that URL that we just copied from the github repository Notice it's really the same thing as the repository with a dot git on the end of it. So github.com slash envisionative slash theme dot git. So we're going to hit return here at this point. Now this is copying down all the files from git, the theme github repository, into this directory. So now if I list all, we've got a new folder here, and it's theme. That's great. All right, we're working good. So the first thing that you're going to want to do, you're probably not going to want to call your theme Envy Quick Theme. So let's go and let's change the name of that folder. Now I've got my Windows Explorer opened here. I'm already in the proper directory structure, so I'm going to go to MVQ2, Website, Portals, Underscore Default, Skins, and there's our MV Quick Theme folder. So the first thing you're going to probably want to do is just rename this folder here to what you want to call your custom theme. So we're going to call this one my custom theme. I would recommend not using any spaces here. So we're going to just use that. All right. Now we're ready to go. Let's go back over into Get Bash. And I'm going to do another list all. And there we see our new folder name reflected. So I'm going to go ahead and change directory into that folder. Okay. So at this point, we are inside of our theme folder. And there's all the files. This matches what is on GitHub. Let's just go there to approve that. All of these files here match the files that we are seeing in our Git Bash window, right? So at this point, I use Visual Studio Code, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the project in Visual Studio Code. Now I could do this a couple of ways, um, but I'm going to do this via the command line here and just do code dot. That will open up Visual Studio Code. You could just as well open up Windows Explorer and right click on the folder name and open with code. But this will get us into code, into this particular um, set of files. So great. Now we are to the point where we're ready to start modifying this for our custom theme. Remember, out of the box, this is going to generate the theme that you see when you go to the demo website at mvquicktheme.com. So this is really just your starting point, and you can modify from there. So if we go and look at our documentation site again we're under the table of contents product project setup it'll advise you that there is a project dot or dash details dot json file this is where you're going to put all your pertinent information as to what the name of your theme is and the description of it and who you are who your company is if you have one what url you want to reference to and what email so we're going to go and look for that project-details.json file inside of Visual Studio Code. So over on the left, this is our files. Let's go ahead and close out these window or these tabs so we get a clean look. All right, there's the file we're looking for, project-details.json. So I'm going to call, I'm going to click on that, and that'll open the file over to the right. 
by default, we've got all of the MB Quick theme base information in here. And there's some good things to point out here. And the reason we do this is really to point out one particular thing here. I mean, one, you got to have something in here because ultimately the information that you put here is going to end up in your DNN manifest file, your .dnn file. That's the manifest.dnn file right here. If you are accustomed to developing in, uh, DNN themes and skins from days old, you probably manually change things in that manifest file um, so that it reflects all the right information. Well, we've made that a lot easier for you. We've pulled out the pertinent information to where you don't have to worry about anything other than just completing these fields. That's one reason we did this. The other reason is, or the other thing that I wanted to point out here is that any HTML type things that you're going to put in here, any special symbols like an ampersand, you'll see here in the author that we've got TK Shepard and then we've got some HTML code here and David Poindexter. Well, you don't want to just put an ampersand in here. So any special symbols, you want to use the HTML code for that particular symbol. That's really important because that's just the way that it works inside of a DNA manifest file. Otherwise, it's going to mess up that manifest file. All right, so let's go ahead and modify this file for our custom theme. So we wanted to call our theme my custom theme. So we're going to put that in for the project name. Now, in this case, this is the very first version of our theme. So we're going to change that to 1.0.0. I'm going to move this to just say my name, David Poindexter. This is my company already. I'm going to change this to our company name. So if we're developing a custom theme for a client, I want it to point to our website, not mbquicktheme.com. And this is our support email, which is fine to put in here. In the description, let's put in something like my custom DNN theme. Of course, in a real world scenario, you're going to probably not call it my custom theme or have this description. So you may want to update those to be pertinent to your particular um, situation. So we're going to go ahead and save this file. Um, I can do file save or I can do control S. In this case, I'll do the file save. All right. So now we've actually modified everything that we need in order to output this theme into our own custom file, um, our custom package for installation. So if you'll remember from the installation uh, page of the documentation, once we clone the repository, we really need to run yarn or yarn install in order to install all of our dependencies. So I'm going to go ahead and run yarn that will pull down all of our package and you'll notice here on the left a node modules folder showed up there um, that has all of the packages that are the dependencies for mb quick theme to operate as you desire it to operate so once this finishes and it shouldn't take too much longer it should give us a successful completion message and at that point, we can go ahead and package this theme up and we will see the package in the end there. So looks like everything was successful. Um, so we're going to go ahead and run one of the four main commands that you're going to need to know, which is gulp space package. Gulp package is going to actually execute gulp build as well as package everything up into a installable package for DNN. Now, we don't really have to do this because we're developing locally inside of DNN, but it is a good test to make sure that everything is operating the way that it should. So we will run gulp package here just to make sure that it all works. And it does. Everything looks good. If we navigate now over to our 
theme directory here, we will now see a build folder. And inside of that, voila, we see my custom theme underscore 1.0.0, which matches the version number that we put in there. The very first part of this is the project name and then underscore install just by convention dot zip. So everything looks good. Now, one of the things that we'll probably want to do here is I'm gonna go ahead and show you the manifest file, how that was managed and updated automatically based on the information that you put in. So if I open manifest.dnn, you'll see that my friendly name is my custom theme. That's the same thing as the project name that we put in there. Notice that we have a package name of envisionative dot my custom theme that is in the form of the company name dot the package name the description is the description the name is the author's name for the owner information the organization is the company name the URL is the website that we put in and the email is the same as the email that we put in the package.json file everything else in here Notice that the base path is updated to reflect the proper project name and where we are. The skin name is updated with the proper pro project name. Everything else in here is really just the way that MV, MV Quick Theme um, manages the manifest file so that you don't have to go in here and manage it. Maybe in the past you have managed a list of every single file that is in your theme package. Well, th there's a concept inside of DNA manifest files that allow you to define resource files. Well, we're using that for various resources. In this case, all menus and partials and root files are put into the else.zip file. All CSS and fonts and JavaScript and images are placed into the dist.zip file. And all of the containers are put into the cont.zip file, and so forth. This is all your MIME types. So really, you know, the days of old are gone. You don't have to manage this file anymore. All you have to do is manage the, excuse me, project-details.json file, and everything is updated inside of the manifest file accordingly. So let's learn one more thing before we wrap this video up. Remember I mentioned that there are four main commands that you're going to want to know with MB Quick Theme. These are in the table of contents under commands. The very first command is gulp manifest. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. By running gulp package, we in essence ran a gulp build. But if you just want to build the project, which handles all of the error checking and concatenation of file or concatenation of things and compi compilation and minification of your JavaScript and SAS files. That's what the build uh, command does or task. Watch is really like a live build type thing where if you run gulp watch, it's going to watch your files for any changes. And if any file changes, it's going to rebuild everything. So that's very cool. You can have your theme loaded up in DNN, update a file, and you can refresh your page and you can see it running properly. Gulp package, again, runs build and zips everything up into an installation package for DNN if you wanted to install it on another DNN instance. So let's circle back to this first command, gulp manifest. What this can do is just update your manifest file based on the information that you put into the project-details.json file. Let's just prove how that works. Let's make a minor change. I'm going to change my name to David P. Let's just change Envisionative to NV. We'll leave everything else the same. I'm going to save this file by doing Control S cycle over to my git bash window and I'm going to run gulp manifest. All right, before I hit return, I'm gonna go ahead and open up this manifest file so that you can see it has all the old information. It's got my full name, it's got our full company name in there. 
So now I'm going to execute gulp manifest. And that will update our manifest file. And it notifies you of that when it's done. Notice when I pull back up this, my name is now David P. The organization is NV. Notice that also changed my package name to NV dot my custom theme as we would expect it to do by the conventions that we've set up within within NV Quick Theme. So let me just change those back and save the file, rerun gulp manifest. It updates the file as we would expect. Let's view it just to make sure. Yep, everything's back to normal. So now we have our own custom theme by name, by our company information. We've got everything in place to where now we can actually start modifying the theme specific files. We're going to go through one file change just to show you kind of the full circle setup. So what we need to do now, we set up this DNN instance, but we have yet to actually implement that theme on the site. So let's go back over to DNN, our local DNN instance here. And that refreshes. We should still be logged in from where we installed it earlier. And we are. All right. From here, I'm going to go to the manage themes in the persona bar. Oops. We'll go here. Now, notice our theme is already showing up in the global theme sections. The global themes are all the themes that are in, are in the underscore default folder within portals. So now we can actually apply my custom theme already to here. So this is one of the beauties of setting it up inside of DNN and running it that way. So let's go ahead and apply it. Confirm. All right, now we're good to go. Notice that we already have a container built in here. It's a pretty empty container. Um, we like to keep things simple and lean uh, on our sites. Uh, we don't do very heavy containers unless the design calls for it. But already in there and it's good to go. So now you would expect when you refresh this page that MV Quick Thing would be showing on the home page, but you'll notice that it is not. Why is that? Well, DNN, when it installs, it automatically applies the default theme for the DNN installation to the home page explicitly. So there's a couple of ways that you can change this. All right. You can go into this page is edit mode. We're going to edit mode and we're going to edit this page's settings from here. We're going to click the gear icon to go into page settings. And we will go to the advanced tab, the appearance sub tab, and notice that the Exilian theme is checked by explicitly within here. So Notice that this is in here now, so we can go ahead and select my custom theme as the site default. And notice one other thing, that the page style sheet references a home.css file. That is something that's built into the Exilion, so we do not need that anymore. So we'll go ahead and remove that reference to home.css so that it doesn't try to load a CSS file that doesn't exist in this new theme package. We'll click Save. We'll close this, refresh our page. And voila, now the MV Quick theme is placed on this page in the, all right. So you'll notice that the content doesn't look great that's to be expected. This content was designed to work within the Exilion theme. It's not a problem. You still have everything that you need in order to get started. So if you wanted to add a new module to the page, you could add an HTML module to the banner area. And we'll just put some quick 
text in here. We'll save that. And it is now in the banner. So what if we wanted to change some things about the theme and see that change reflected live on the site? All right, let's go back over to our Visual Studio code. Remember, this theme is running inside of the DNN instance, so we can modify the code directly. But one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a terminal window right within Visual Studio Code by going to Terminal, New Terminal. And I'm going to go ahead and run a command, that fourth command that we were talking about that we haven't seen yet, gulp, and we're going to run watch. Now what this is going to do is it's going to watch for any changes to the files, and we should be able to refresh the page and see those changes live. Now notice that it doesn't give me the command prompt back again because this is a live process that's running. We would have to kill this process if we wanted it to stop. So it's running now. So let's go to our default.ascx file. This is our main theme file that's set up within me quick theme. I'm going to make this a bit smaller. Let's make a change. Let's make the banner pane. Right now, it goes eight columns out of the 12 columns. Let's flip back over there just so we can visualize this. If we go into edit mode, you'll notice that the outline around this pane doesn't go the full width of the content area, which would be from here over to the right side of the menu here. Let's say we wanted this to be the full 12 columns wide. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And we can just use Bootstrap because Bootstrap is built into MB Quick Theme. We can use the Bootstrap class for 12 columns. Let's save this file. Now, watch down here at the bottom. It should recognize that change. Oh, this is actually a, an ASCX file, so it doesn't need to monitor that file. If I were to change a, a color or something like that in a CSS file, well, let's just go ahead and do that so you can see how the watch works. Let's go into source. Let's go into our SAS files. Let's go into variables. And let's just change the primary color to something else. So right now, this is bootstrap variables. So we can easily change the primary color to something else. So let's go and use our little editor here. Let's just change that to something crazy like fuchsia, okay? <laughs> or some hot pink there. Let's save this file, watch it out at the bottom. Oh, it noticed the change to the SAS. So it's going to compile that SAS down to CSS for us automatically without having to run any commands. Isn't that fantastic? All right, so now we'll flip back over to DNN, and we're going to re refresh the page. We're expecting a couple of things to happen. The primary color, which is used in the menu here, as well as down at the bottom in the footer, and I think it's also used in this text right here, we should expect all that to change to hot pink. We should also expect this container area to go full width, not full width, but 12 columns for the actual uh, grid for the content on the site. So let's go ahead and refresh. Remember, we haven't run any commands. We've just been running gulp watch. And there we go. We've got 12 columns wide on this. And down at the bottom, we should, oops. Well, our text did, looks like it changed. Um, but the menu, I think, is something else. Let's try to refresh, do a hard refresh here. Ah, that's what it was. I needed to do a Control F5 to hard refresh it to get those colors to that CSS to reload or force reload. So now we've got our color change in the menu, the hyperlink text colors, which uses the primary color has also changed and I think our footer should also change as well and it did so 
that's the basics of how you get started with developing your own custom theme and it just may not be intuitive what the initial steps are but just to recap we installed DNN into a directory of our choice on our local drive we cloned the github repo for MV quick theme into our portals underscore default directory we rename that folder to the name that we want for our theme we opened up the project in Visual Studio code you could use any other editor that you would like like sublime or even notepad if you want in the git bash window we ran yarn to install all of our dependencies and then we navigated to the project-details.json file updated the information to make this specific to our custom theme that we're developing then we ran gulp package just to make sure everything was working and our workflow was set up properly from there we talked about the gulp manifest file which updates the manifest.dnn file based on the information for project-details.json and then we ran gulp watch to illustrate making changes to the dnn files or to the uh, mv quick theme files for your custom theme and seeing those live changed on your local DNN instance. We also talked about a few things about DNN and applying the theme to the site and the fact that the home page by default has the theme explicitly defined in there so you need to go and update the page settings to define your new theme to show up on the home. You could have just as well added a new page and changed the default site settings to use the new custom theme as well and it would have applied directly your home page would have still been the old theme though so let me know if you have any questions or if I can clarify anything that just really didn't make sense to you or if you think there's a way that we can improve this to make it easier for you as a developer of custom themes Thank you, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more. Have a great day.